Today I'm doing a pink theme for Butterfly. So now I'm sifting her sand to get out some of the soil and stuff that has gotten into it. As you can see, the soil is very dirty or it has a lot of bedding mixed in. So I have to switch that out soon. I'm using a heather plant again in this setup. Um, they're safe for hamsters, but uh, you should like put a um, layer of coconut soil on the top. They can't survive fully in coconut soil, so you can't change it into that, but you can put coconut soil on top and then put some rocks onto it to avoid digging in it. Because the heather plant is heavy, I placed a piece of cork underneath for it to um, stand on so that she can get cr crushed if she stands under it. I have the heather plant in two pots so that I can take one of the pots out with the heather inside of it so that when I take it out the bedding won't fall into there so that I can water it. You can see her multi-chamber buried in the left corner and then I also have two hides between the soil and the bedding. I added a cork log and now I'm adding a grapevine piece and some cork. The grapevine piece is heavy so it's leaned onto the ceramic multi-chamber that stands in the soil. I had some problems with the cork log in the back there because I couldn't place the lid down, but I fixed it later. And then I'm adding some Gypsy Ultra between the sand and soil and a cork log. I normally use random pieces of wood and stuff as barriers. I'm not a big fan of Bender Bridge barriers and if you're gonna use that please cover up the gaps with moss so that the hamster's legs can't get stuck and I'm adding added um ceramic tunnel that I made myself and then now a piece of driftwood into the sand when I make my hamster setups I always try to fit as much of stuff as possible to avoid them getting bored as well as they really love the coverage from a lot of stuff. Hamsters usually don't like very open cages. If you're struggling to make your cage look natural, I recommend stacking things or items on top of each other to make it look more natural instead of placing everything very symmetrical. In the Netherlands, they recommend to place all of your items in the middle of the cage and nothing against the walls to make your cage look more natural and crowded. I always have to try with the lid if I can close it because I always try to make as much as possible out of the height of the detail because it's pretty low. I couldn't close the lid all the way because the cork log was too high up. So I had to take it out, both of them out, and then dig some of the bedding out of that area to make them come lower, lower so that I could close it. Then I'm adding the bedding to the back to build it up a little so that it kind of looks better and like not bedding going down at the back. And then I'm pressing it down so that it will hold burrows better. Then I'm adding some rocks to the soil area to give another texture and help to file down nails. And then one in the sand bath. Progress video. Then to the sand area, I'm adding a terracotta pot in the corner. Sometimes she likes to pee in this one and it makes it easy to clean out her pee. I have this cute pink bowl that I recently got for this theme. I struggled a lot with where I were gonna put 
put it. I had a lot of moss from a recent theme, so I tried to put it all in this cage setup. I used a lot of it behind one of the cork logs and then some under kind of hidden. I love how moss looks in cork logs, so I put some into one of the cork logs. I realized I had forgotten to put some new bedding into her multi-chamber, so I ended up taking everything in that area out of the cage again to put the bedding in, so that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, you couldn't really see what I was doing, the camera was not in the right place, so I just skipped over that part. Then here I'm adding everything back again. Adding some more bedding into the cage because I could fit a little more and then I like the look of this one. I love to reuse sprays I've used in past setups when she leaves like the outer shell of the seeds so it is fine to use again and I look really good. These are old sorghum or darius sprays that she's eaten the seeds out of and then I'm adding the water of the dish these sprays. They fit the pink theme good because they're a little red, orange, pink-ish color. I like how they look a little like trees and I'm, I'm adding some old millet sprays because why not? And then some crystals, keep in mind not all crystals are safe to use, so you have to research that. I'm adding some dandelion leaves, hazel leaves and some raspberry leaves to make the cage a little more green. In the left corner of the cage I added rose petals for some pink color since it's a pink theme. Here I'm trying to find a place for the pink bowl again. I wasn't happy with where it was. I ended up placing it down beside the multi-chamber layer on. Then um, red millet spray. And these are some plastic butterflies, but they're out of reach for her, so she can't reach them. I recently received my Oakwood Forest Wild Spray box, so I'm giving her some of the sprays from that box. This one right here is an amaranth spray. And this is some black proso millet. I really like how it's hanging down over like the cork logs and grapevine pieces. My room always gets so messy when I do a cage setup, so here's behind the scenes of how my room looks. Butterfly goes in a 16 gallon tank when I do her cage, so here she is. And here is how the final cage turned out. I fixed a few things that I forgot to film and I was in a video call while I filmed it so I didn't really focus a lot. This is definitely one of my favorite setups so far and I hope you also like it. I love, love how pink it looks. I'm thinking of doing either blue or purple next so I'm trying to get some items for that colored cage theme. Let me know what you think of the setup in the comments. There is a new vlog video-ish coming soon and thank you so much for watching.